Hi guys, my name is Andre aka Mark Renton and today it was snowing so that's the reason why I would like to talk about mastering. So, uh, you know, for me mastering is not about making the perfect mastering. Yes, of course you can find many YouTube videos uh, about that and I'm of course interested in a perfect mastering as well, right? So, but usually um, that's not my problem number one. My problem number one is like I've done a track, I want to send this out to DJs and maybe to um, some labels and uh, just for the sake of comparison I want to have some kind, I call it like a demo mastering, which means like it should it should be like uh, ready to play it against or with other tracks in a set and you want to have like a comparison, yeah? So um, yeah, that's what I would like, that's what I want to talk about today, how I do basically my mastering or my demo mastering. And this whole thing is like based on the Pareto principle, I think that you could call it like, it means like 80% of the quality you can get with like 20% of the effort. With some very simple methods, you can already get, I think, quite good results and uh, make your track comparable to uh, other tracks that are out there. So to actually uh, show you what I'm talking about, I want to show the track The Beltas, it's called. It came out on uh, Drum Army on my Signal Wave CP. I really enjoy this track. And by the way, this track I started in Tashkent in Uzbekistan at my um, parents-in-law's place, I think in summer 2018, 2019. I am lost, sorry, with because of the lockdown. But whatever, here, so here, this is the basically the sound how I started. I've done this on my machine drum. Just recorded random stuff. Or not random stuff, but cool stuff, you know. <laughs> and... So this now is completely without mastering and so on, okay? So this is my track I want to send to, let's say, a label, Drum Army. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay, so we see here on the master bus, there's nothing ongoing. Uh, I'm using this spectrum and you'll find similar plugins, I think, in every door these days. So check this out. Okay, so that this is what we've got. Yeah, this is basically the, the curve of my track, uh, the spectrum that actually how my track looks like. Uh, what I try to achieve just as a reference for drum and bass, um, all the cool tracks that I like, basically have the sub bass around minus six dB. It's not a rule of thumb or whatever, or maybe for other genres you find maybe something else, but just for me, you know, like the loudness level, I try to reach this minus six dB. And the second thing what I'm going to do is like, I have some tracks as a reference that I like and um, that I like to compare my track against. So in this case, um, let's check it out. Let's open iTunes, go to my track references playlist and ah Sully I think that's quite cool so listen to this okay so this basically and listen so Sully and my track Okay, I think we can achieve there some things. The most or the, the simplest trick you can do is actually, of course, compress the master what you've got. So in Ableton, I prefer the glue compressor and see what we can do with that. Just, you know, like that the needle is moving around a little bit, not too much, but. Okay, enable the um, built-in limiter. Yeah, we get already some results, but that's not actually what I'm looking for. So my plugin choice number one is I really love the isotope plugins. And uh, for that, I'm using Ozone already for years, especially for this purpose. So in here, I, I should do some kind of preset because I'm usually doing the same thing. And this is what I'm going to show you now. So. I open U Ozone and always do like more or less the same things. Yeah, so I use, use the equalizer at some preset because it always sounds better, <laughs> um, way better, right? So uh, then the second thing is I usually use the vintage compressor 
And what I try to achieve with that is basically the same what I just showed you with the normal compressor. Yeah, so I just try to uh, level it up to a certain area. But not too much. Okay. Then afterwards, I usually add the maximizer and the maximizer basically is like uh, another compressor that of course, uh, you know, like seems to be very transparent. And this is what you're gonna do or want to do in mastering, right? It should be transparent, but we want to enhance the loudness. Uh, here there are different modes, uh, check them out. Yeah, what they do is basically, I think, enable the um, uh, oversampling. You see here in the lower left, ozone is actually producing quite a lot of latency. Yeah, so and if I now here enable the uh, further oversampling method, Check this out. Now it's right around 16 milliseconds or 721 samples. And if I enable this one, yeah, it's increasing. Yeah. So if you have problems with the latency or whatever, then of course that's basically the mode where you have to check this out. And also a good practice is of course not add the mastering on top of your like normal project, but maybe export it as a WAV file, as a stereo file. And then on top you can do the mastering. So you have again all your CPU capacity for that. But uh, yeah, in most cases I you know like just do rough mastering like that. So let's check this out. Add some ceiling for MP3 compression and so on. So that they have some headroom. Okay, that's I think already quite cool. The next thing is um, just what I discovered recently is the low end focus. So check this out. Um, especially for trans, if you're doing like trance music, you can really get some <laughs> out of there. Too much to be honest. Just a little bit. Cool. I also of course like the exciter but to be honest i have to still to play around a little bit with the exciter i'm not used to that uh just check out some i still have to play or learn it actually i just uh, check out some presets that i um yeah i usually check out some presets and then like decide do i like it or do i not like it But let's add this before the compression, the actual compression. All right, and see what we've got. We just achieved minus six dB. This is like my reference. And yeah, you know, like I do this in like maybe two minutes or so, and then I'm already happy. Listen to this. That's it basically, you know, like uh, with some simple tricks or some simple method, I think you can already achieve a lot. With that, I'm not replacing any mastering engine or whatever. They can do it way better, have better equipment, better plugins, better techniques, whatever. But at least for me, it's like uh, producing a reference that I can play against other tracks or compare to other tracks. I can send this out now to some labels and DJs and um, yeah, then maybe if it really comes to a release, they or somebody else is of course doing another in the proper mastering. You know, you have to understand for what you're mastering, right? So are you mastering for maybe um, streaming or are you mastering for uh, vinyl or whatever, or maybe a CD production? Uh, but that's not my intention. My intention or my, my goal is to actually produce a proper file that I can transfer, send somebody uh, that he or she can play it uh, maybe in their set or in her set, yeah? I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe drop me some comments, hit the like button, spread the word and uh, subscribe and talk to you soon. Bye.